Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Stripe Checkout to work inside of your Rails app. And it's actually pretty cool. So there's this new embeddable checkout from Stripe where you can get a checkout set up for you. So I'm checking out the demo right here. You can set your colors, add styles. And then just like that, you get a stripe checkout and what you can actually do now is you can embed this whole checkout into your rails app very easily so you can take care of uh, product purchases and subscriptions right inside your rails app and you no longer have to redirect to stripe to do this checkout you can just embed it right inside of your domain so it's pretty clean i'll show you how you, we can set it up so i've already set up a stripe account uh, for the test account and uh, I'm show you how easy this is to do so let's go and create a new rails app so I'm gonna call it e-commerce store and I'm gonna use Postgres for the database and then tailwind for the CSS All right, now that we created that, let's go into e-commerce store. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is create the database. And now we can just start the server. So because I used Tailwind, we can start it with bin dev to run the Tailwind server. But you'll see we have the rail screen. We don't have any pages set up. So really for the pages, I'm just gonna have a product. So I'm gonna go and do a scaffold for products. So I'm going to say Rails G scaffold product. The product is going to have a name. It's going to have a price, which would be a decimal. And then maybe it has a description. For that, we can use rich text. And then let's migrate to database. Actually, because we're adding rich text, we need to say uh, Rails action text colon install. That sets up the action text code. And then we'll migrate the database again. Now we can start the server. And we still won't see anything, but if we go to slash products, we'll see that we have the products page. And we can create a new product. I'm going to say my first product. We can give it $15 price. Hmm. Looks like it's not showing up as a integer field. I don't know why. Oh, I guess you that's what it is. You just do step zero one. It's still kind of interesting though. Okay, there we go. Anyways, now that we have this, this is actually when we get to the stripe point, uh, we pass it in. We have to multiply this by 100 because that's how stripe uses it. It doesn't do decimal. It needs a full integer. That's fine. So to do that, I'm just going to pull up the documentation. So actually what you want to do is you want to do this quick start embedded form. And then over here it has an example, but it's using Sinatra. But we can make this work in Rails. So we need the Stripe gem. We just add it like this to the gem file. And then the next thing is you need an endpoint to create the checkout session. And the reason for this is, so what's gonna happen is when you come here, there's gonna be a button to purchase the product. And then we're gonna redirect the user to a purchase page. And then we're gonna have a stimulus controller that has a bit of JavaScript that triggers the Stripe checkout to appear on the page. So I'll show you how that works, but that's why we're gonna need an endpoint that creates a Stripe checkout object. But let's first, let's add that purchase link. So I'm gonna do it in the product partial. Let's do a link to purchase. And then we're gonna to need to create a new route for this. So something like product 
purchase path and then we'll pass in the product okay we don't have that route yet so let's go ahead and add it in so right here in resources products we can do do and then we can say resources purchases and then we really only need the the new and the create action for now but i mean you can you can have you can leave all these routes you don't have to worry about it but i like to restrict the routes to the only ones that i'm using at the moment so now we need to make this contr controller a purchases controller but i actually want to nest it inside of products so we can do scope module products the reason for this is if we didn't do this then it would be looking for a products controller just or a purchases controller just right on the main level but i want to nest it in a products folder you have a products folder and then a purchases controller and then we need to namespace this in the module products and then a purchases controller and then for this we're really only going to have a new action so yeah actually we don't need the create because the purchase is, is just going to have a new and then we're going to trigger the checkout session so let's create the view for that real quick so i'll create a new folder products because we have to oh there's already a product folder let's create a new folder inside of there i'll call it purchases and then we'll have a new template new.html.erb and then inside of here we actually don't even need to put any code because the stripe checkout already looks good but you can embed it further and add more code but i'll show you how we add this checkout so we just need a div and then we're gonna have a stimulus controller stripe checkout and there's actually, we need to pass in the key, but we can add that in a second. So I'm gonna say in the console, I'm gonna do the generator for a stimulus controller, Rails G stimulus, and I'm gonna call it Stripe Checkout. Oh, whoops, I forgot to bundle for Stripe. So we do Rails G stimulus, Stripe Checkout. Now we have a Stripe Checkout controller. And inside of here is where we're gonna run the code from the docs. So if you see, it's it has this endpoint, but we'll get there in a second. What we need to look at is checkout JS. So what this does is it gets this publishable key, and then it creates a new object called Stripe. So we need to do this. We're gonna do it right in the stimulus controller, and then we need to pass in the key. So what I'm gonna say is this dot publishable key value and then we'll pass that through the values api so you can say static values and then we'll have a publishable key which is type string and now right here on that new page we can pass it in through the data attribute stripe checkout publishable key value and then this is where we're going to put the key the value of the key but actually we don't have that key yet. We need to add that from the Stripe dashboard. So if you haven't yet, you need to set up a new app and fill in your business information on Stripe. And then you're able to generate some keys. So you go to developers and then API keys. And right here you have the publishable key. And we're gonna put this in our Rails app using the credentials folder that's built into Rails. So to do that, you can go on your console. You have to select the editor. I'm going to use Vin. And then do Rails credentials edit and specify the environment which I'm doing development. And inside of here, I'm going to do Stripe as the namespace. And then I'm just going to do PK for publishable key because that's what Stripe does. And then SK for secret key. So secret key is really secret. But this is a test account, so I'm not worried about showing it in this video. So after we have it here, quit out, save it, and we're good to go. 
now we're going to need to pass it in here. So to do it, we can say rails.application.credentials.dig stripe npk. And it's actually fine to display this here because publishable key is public and there's really no harm, but you wouldn't want to display your secret key on the view. Let's reload. We still don't have this path. I think it's because of the new. So over here, we need to add new. There we go. So now we have that purchase link. It looks kind of squished, so I'm going to add some margin. Put a div around it. All right, so now we have this purchase button. We click it, it goes to the purchase page, and this should open up the Stripe thing. But we get this error, Stripe is not defined. And that's actually because we haven't added the Stripe JavaScript, the Stripe library. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, there's this. You actually just do it with this um, script. So what that would look like is in the head. We have to include it. I'm pretty sure we can do a JavaScript include tags. Although this, I think it's only with ES build, and we're not using ES build, so might just have to do that script. But let's see if this works. Oh, JavaScript include tag. Perfect. Okay, just like that, we're now doing it and it says, please call Stripe with the publishable key used in empty string. So in here, I mean, we should have been passing it correctly, right? I think the only thing is we need to restart the server. And it should be working. Okay, yeah, it's working. The only thing is we haven't done anything with the Stripe. So the next part of the code here was to make a post request to our checkout session. And then in the JSON, we'll get the client secret and then we'll create a checkout and then we'll mount the checkout. So we can add this code in here. And for the response, we're actually gonna use um, request.js. So I'll show you what that looks like. We import it up here. We import post from rails request.js. We actually need to add this library. So I'm gonna go in the console and since I'm using import maps, I'm gonna say bin slash import map pin rails.request.js. So now we have that library available. And now we also have to change the connect to be async because the post request is going to be using await. So we can do the const response equals await post. And then we're gonna have to pass in a URL. So I'm also gonna pass this through the values. So we can have a URL type string. And this is actually gonna be the checkout URL for the endpoint that we're gonna add. And then right here, we're mounting it on the, this element by the ID, but instead we can just pass in this element because we're just gonna mount it right on this div. So now we need to add in that endpoint. I'm gonna add it in right after this other one so we can say data stripe checkout URL value. And now we need to add the URL. Okay, so now we need to add the checkout URL and the endpoint. So to do that, I'm going to add a new resource on here. Stay try stripe checkouts, and we're only gonna have create action. Now inside of here, in the products folder, we're gonna create the stripe checkouts controller.
Now inside of here, we're gonna have the code to create the Stripe checkout. Let's start off by saying product, product find by the product ID. This will be passing that in, then we can add this route. This is gonna look like product Stripe checkouts path. And then we'll pass in the product. But I don't think we've defined product yet in the controller. We need to do that real quick. So we go to the purchases controller and inside here we need to define product. Just like that. Now we have the correct product. We're passing it in and it has the correct URL. So this is good. So it should be already making the request. It looks like response JSON is not a function. Let's see, yeah, actually, I don't think it's a function. It's just a. Yeah, you're supposed to just run it without the parameters. I guess it's just an attribute, but you still have to uh, wait for it. So let's look at the console to see what's happening. Okay, so yeah, we're hitting the Stripe checkouts. It looks like it's working, but we're not returning anything. So we're gonna add this code in here to create the Stripe checkout session. And we're gonna have to change a few things, like right here, change this to render JSON. And then we'll see, we have this return URL. We're gonna need to set that up. And also, it's expecting this price ID, but we're not gonna use that either. We're gonna use instead the unit amount, which we'll have to get from, really it's the product dot price times 100. And then we have to set up this return URL, which is wherever the user is gonna get redirected after they finish uh, paying for the product. So for this, I'm going to say product purchases path. Well, I'm going to create a success uh, route. Pass in product. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm going to add a block to purchases. And then I'm going to say get success on collection. So once you're done with the purchase, we're going to redirect you to the, the product purchases slash success route. That looks good. This will mean we're gonna have a new action right here. So that looks good. This means that we have a new action right here called success. And we're also gonna have this. So we might as well move this to a before action. Set product. Now we don't have to have that code, but we're gonna need that success page. So I'm gonna come over here, add a success.html.yearby. And here we're going to show that success and we're gonna actually wait until the payment's processed and then we'll show the success. So we need to add some sort of like purchase model to store that the client has successfully purchased. But we'll work on that in a second. So right now we have this information. We should be able to at least see the Stripe checkout. Oh, whoops. So it looks like we didn't set up the Stripe uh, API keys. I'm just gonna open up another app that I was doing this. Okay, perfect. So we need to create an initializer. stripe.rb initializer and inside of here we're going to pass the publishable key the secret key and then we're also going to set the api key as secret key perfect so let's restart the server and i think now we should be able to see it oh uh, it looks like unknown parameter unit amounts 
is how we're going to do it here. Valid integer. Okay, perfect. So I think it's actually starting to work. I'm just going to turn that to an integer. Wait, it doesn't know about product data. Okay, let's try to delete that. Oh, yeah, this needs to be an actual URL, not a path. like that we finally got it rendered but why is it so small I need to at least tell it to take up the whole page there we go and also if we add a picture it would show up here and really that's why you're supposed to put in more information about the price so I think we could do it here in the line items if we want to pass in more data I just don't know about this this line items API is really kind of not that good. So usually I would create a price in here. I think there's an API to do it too. So that might be a better solution, but I'm just trying to get this together quick. Somewhere, oh yeah, products right here. You can actually add a product. And then once you add the product, it has a price ID. So that might be a better way to do it. Maybe in the product model or the products controller after you create one you would I don't know you just keep the stripe product updated with your local product but this is another way to do it and it's working so I'm pretty happy with that but now we're gonna need to add in some some web hooks I mean don't really for a for a product like this you don't really need a webhook you might just want to redirect them to the success page and then print out a nice success message Just some sort of message. Oh, whoops. Uh, to add some sort of column on this flex call. I don't know why I did that so late. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, something like this as a success page. And then if you go to your Stripe dashboard, you'll see you had a successful payment right here. You can track it. But there might be some other things in the app that you want to do. You want to get a webhook. So 
this is actually sending events. Stripe will send your app events through a webhook. We can set that up pretty easily. Hey guys, if you watched it this far, um, thank you. That's awesome. It really means a lot. I know this video was kind of long. I was trying to keep it short, but setting up the all those routes and the Stripe checkout can be complicated sometimes. Uh, we still haven't even set up webhooks, so I'll have to create a separate video because I want to keep this one short. But I hope this was helpful. You're able to embed a Stripe checkout with little code, just a little stimulus controller and an endpoint to create the checkout. Yeah, if you enjoyed this and it helped you, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting new content about Ruby on Rails, Hotwire, and all those cool tools, Turbo Native and Strata. I'm trying to make some content with that soon. Yeah, thanks for watching.